It's all about feeling better. I think Bob has been stressing repeatedly in this last while, I don't know how many times, that it's an internal process. And um, I just saw the interview with Patrick in which he stresses again, uh, a thing that I had said some months back at one point when Osensei would stop and go do his little process and then come back and do a throw that was somehow more refined or more present or more powerful, uh, more magical, um, that so many people looked at the externals of what happened when he came back. Uh, they didn't even really stop to think, wait a minute, he, he just did a shift. And it seems like very few people focused on the shift that he was making. So let's just start there. Uh, the way I've been playing it right now is breathe exactly the way you want to. So I've used the phrase, listen to the impulse to breathe. It was a way to connect you to that dynamic energy that um, is usually deeper than where our attention is focused in our being. And I think if you start to feel like, how would you want to breathe? You start to feel into that impulse combined with every other system in your being. And just that simple focus of attention starts to unify these aspects into a unified field. They talk a lot about mind-body harmony. I think that was a very simplistic way of saying, bringing these aspects that seem disparate or, uh, I don't know if I want to say in opposition, but, but opposing in their styles to uh, complement and to work together. And so I use the, the phrase, uh, you know, the, the way you feel if you were going to go to, to dinner or on a long car trip with a couple that didn't get along uh, and versus how you feel about the same potential with a couple that does get along. And that that represents the masculine and feminine within each of us. And so as we start to breathe exactly the way we want to, I think that's a way of uh, allowing the masculine and feminine to speak together in a loving way, in a way that they help each other understand each other and make each other more or better or more complete or fill in the gaps until there's a much more holistic awareness that's present. And I think. To some degree, simplistically, when Osensei would do his process that would align these things up, something in that domain was going on. And I have no idea how many variations or whatever he worked with or whether it was one process. But clearly something would happen that would bring a much more unified uh, field together there. So let's go back and say, are you breathing the way you want? Are you actually listening to that? And then the next phase I said it, it was, of course, most people, when they say, well, are you breathing? They're breathing in and out of the lungs. And they think of that as breathing, which, of course, it is. But it's only one phase of what I would call a five-step system. And I don't really care how we break it down. But for now, it goes into the lungs. Then in the lungs, it transfers into the bloodstream. Then the bloodstream transports it to the cells where it's absorbed into the cell. And that's the place where you start to feel the breathing in each cell of your being, which, of course, you don't exactly feel that way. What you feel is the glow of life that comes off of each cell. And I'd like to call your attention to feeling that as you breathe air into the lungs, into the bloodstream, to the cells, to the burning of the oxygen, to just feeling alive itself and bringing your attention to that inner place of your vitality and your aliveness. Now, my story goes something like if you're somewhere you love being, uh, this is probably not an uncommon feeling. Uh, you're actually kind of enjoying being alive. But when the pressure increases, you drive into town towards a, a job or whatever and meeting, and, and uh, now it's you're not in the same relaxed place probably. So watching that happen and then all of a sudden there's traffic and now you're late and you can just feel the whole tone of your being changing. And what I'm playing with here is how much can you be sitting in traffic and be at the ocean at the same time, if you will? How much can you make that shift in your own location 
to feel better, to move to a place in your own being, in your own feeling awareness, in your own perception, in your inner location, in your tone, where you feel better. I was laughing. I was, uh, I don't, you know, Lauren's not here tonight because he went to a concert. And I had this, sent him a thing, our last comment. And I said, of course, enjoy the concert. And I thought to myself again, why do we say that to each other? Enjoy the trip. Have a good night. You know, whatever. Because there is an aspect of enjoying yourself that's very, very volitional. It's very intentional. It's something that you sort of have to do. Like when the sunset's happening, if you stop and enjoy it, you get a level of, of appreciation of it that you miss if you don't pay attention to it. So to me, it's very much about locating your attention. Now I'm going to say in your central core, in the glow of life, when you're breathing all five systems. And then the really the fifth is that pulse, that breath that's going on cellularly, where the cells are sending a signal to, through the bloodstream to the rest of the systems, the lungs and the uh, diaphragm, to pump more oxygen to them. And all of that's happening in relationship to a universal pulse. So if you shift into feeling, you're part of that. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to know about it. You just have to feel into that connection, and it starts to transform who you are. And I'm guessing as you center, just come into the center of your own core of being, of your own glow of aliveness. And the trick that I use when my mind wanders, I just tighten the muscles in my body. I try and tighten kind of the whole system at once, gently, just a little bit, just tighten a little bit, and then I release again. And I'm back to that opening, sinking open, dropping back, sinking open. And I'm back into feeling that glow of aliveness again. Now, can I do that in traffic? Can I make that movement or whatever it is? So to me, this is phase one of what I thought it was about. I uh, I was kind of laughing to myself. I don't know how you all think about this. Like I said, I, I love the math work. I loved playing in that realm and, and everything I learned and everything that, that happened there in a sense was very fun and creative. But when I think about how many times and how many techniques most of us have practiced in our lives and how many times we've ever had to use them in any situation that related to what we were theoretically practicing for, uh, I'd say we wasted our time. But if we were doing it knowing that there was some kind of uh, alignment that takes place when you repeat those practices, and if you could imagine yourself, and I don't think you actually have to get up and do it physically, although... I'm pretty sure most of us really do at some point. And maybe you want to get up and do it physically, but I think just sitting, you can almost close your eyes, picture any attack, respond with any technique, and just take a quick minute and in your imagination, feel how you'd like to feel better. Were you a little bit forward? Were you a little back? Were you a little tight? Were you too loose? Uh, were you more upper than lower? Whatever. Just take a minute and feel better. Okay, to me, it's all about making this shift into feeling better. And so if you're doing it constantly on the mat, hopefully it transfers over to when you hear yourself on the phone with somebody. If you're a little forward with them, you go to a place where you feel better and your tone when you speak to them comes across better. I'm looking at breathing in a way that recognizes a whole system not just the external breathing, but the whole system of breath, and then making that shift into a finer dimension of awareness where you actually, maybe at first it seems like imagination, but you imagine, you feel, there's actually a universal pulse that's breathing you. If you stop breathing, it'll keep breathing you. So start to enjoy it. And then, like I say, you can get into a conversation with it. And so breathe exactly the way you want to. Hold the breath exactly as long as it feels good for you. Start letting this wisdom of enjoyment or feeling better or uh, the fact that your system is trying to guide you towards the completion of your bestowed mission. But it's a location that you find in yourself because 
the location in the default network where you're worrying about everything and you're not feeling your body. Wano Sensei said something to the effect that I've heard it translated as, you've got to put it in your body. It's got to happen through you in all the dimensions, the physical as well as the mental and the emotional, that all of them become one system. I think the breath is the best connection point, but I want to come back to the location. Uh, pretty much when you're done with, um, let's do a, a stretching exercise here, you're kind of a Nikyo type stretch here. All right, so you come up and you put the Nikyo on, everybody, yeah? And you come to a place where it kind of naturally stops, okay? Now, if you straighten and settle and open and whatever, I'm going to guess that you can now stretch your wrist just a little bit further to get it to the point where it's even close to feeling how it hurt before, right? But the second correction is much smaller. Now, if we straighten and center, drop back, sink open, feel where you are, breathe all five systems so you feel the glow of aliveness. Now, I'll bet you can move your wrist a little further. All right? But much smaller. And if we did it again, the next one would be much smaller. They start to get so small, you don't think they matter. So it, the idea, and I, I get this from my, my trumpet, I'm trying to learn, I was going to call it trumpet playing, but it's trumpet learning. Um, every time you move up to the smaller opening for a higher note, it's half the size of the one before. Very quickly, they get so minute. And I notice now, if we'll go back to locating, if you, um, you're you doing this stretching once more really quickly, when you let go of it, do you naturally drop back just a little bit? You, drop back just a little bit. And if you're trained, you sink open. And like I said, if you don't feel it, tighten a little bit and release. And you'll feel that beginning of that. Stay with that feeling. If you lose it, tighten a little bit and release. Breathe so that the cells are glowing with aliveness. They're, they're just loving the oxygen or whatever the feeling, but you're enjoying being here. Um, it doesn't mean that you like it. It means that you're able to just enjoy yourself in the way that you're facing your warrior's challenge. And I say our warrior's challenge really is to bring a loving, harmonious, joyful spirit to life. Uh, love, harmony, joy like charity begin at home. Back to breathing. Let me double check for you. When you do a couple deep breaths, and I say deep, I don't really mean deep. I mean just kind of full breath, feeling the cells absorbing and burning the oxygen, feeling the flow of life through the whole system. Now I'm going to add the back of the body as much as the front of the body, the underside as much as the upside. And I like to talk about the gravity shadow, the way your weight transfers into the earth. Just, there's still just a glow of your connection to a larger universe, okay? All right, that must have been 40 seconds. Uh, my question is, is it working? Does that sense to you come to, you come a little bit more back to yourself. You feel better. You feel yourself better. So I think we've got our fundamentals here. And this tone of paying attention to your own aliveness, simply feeling the glow of life that's yourself, you start to come back to being yourself. Like I say, you take off the makeup, you take off the costume, you leave that character's mindset behind of whoever you've been playing at the party or the work or the office or the, and you come back to just, to, like I say, take off the tie and jacket and just come back to being yourself, something like that. If you can have some picture of that, what I want to say is this is the last piece, and it may be, to me, the most important because I think it's the most missed, that each of these moves in gets very, very much smaller to the point where they seem like they're not that important. Like, oh, yeah, just a teeny little move. I want to say that the power of each one is greater than the power of the one before it. It actually creates a greater transition in terms of the world that you create living in that self or that much closer to yourself until you basically drop into just being who you are and you bring that to the party 
You play your part in the symphony. And I don't know how else the symphony really will ever be good if we start playing each other's parts or don't play our parts or don't bring that completion of our bestowed mission to the fore in our lives. And that means sharing who you are into the world, being able to say the things that you think, but being in a place where you're located uh, in yourself, you don't have a thing about it. You're not going to dump on somebody. You're able to communicate your information, your concept, your love, your concern in a way that it doesn't become a thing. You know what I mean? It's no thing. It's nothing because the self, when you really start to get into it, there's nothing there. And that's how you know where you are, because if there's a thing, it's time to sink open, drop back, sink open, breathe all the way to the glow of life itself, feel it yourself as the glow of life that is yourself, breathe in perfect, exact harmony with yourself, and intentionally enjoy yourself just feel a little bit better and that's really what i think he gave us that if we would all do that we would create i mean this whole tendency to get into a thing and then dump on people and then once someone's dumped on you uh, before you know it you're into a thing with them and now we've got you know bosnia or you pick your favorite you know uh and and, you know, people 700 years later are angry about something that happened 700 years ago. And it's like, really? Are we going to stay there forever? And most, I think, of the world probably will. But those of us who seek to follow what Osensei offered us, I think if you'll play with this, you'll just see that when you do this, you're better to everybody. And the reciprocating echoes that you get back from them are better. It isn't that obvious. Isn't that, I don't know why, but... When I'm driving and somebody cuts me off, I, you know, all this is gone in a second. And or any little thing that just upsets me that I'll throw my soul away for. The question is, can I see myself doing it? Can I recognize that I'm doing it? Or do I just keep unloading on someone else? Does the energy keep me from actually noticing where I am, noticing that I'm in a tone that I don't like? And then I can breathe. I can drop back and sink open or locate myself where I feel better. And all of a sudden, I live in a different world and live in a different universe. And on that note, I just leave it. Try it. You'll like it. Okay. I'm going to go back to work. I very much enjoyed this and I hope you did. <laughs>